Hello, and welcome to Building a T-Shirt Empire. What's up? Uh, my name's Cole. Uh, it, we're here live at the show. Uh, how's it been going for you guys this morning? It's been a busy early start. Uh, it's, as soon as the doors open, it felt like a mad rush. It's been good. Uh, scanned a lot of people so far. Good conversation. Uh, it's been a slow month for a lot of shop. This is kind of like, I think that line where it starts to go from slow to, to busy again. Yeah. So hopefully that's that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, good to see people always, right? Like yeah. reconnect and, and chat with folks. So yeah, it's been been good so far. So I mean, speaking of it being slow, I mean, you're the salesman. Like, <laughs> tell us what what in the world is people people supposed to be doing right now? Yeah, uh, I've been hearing a lot of what do we do? Like, we need help now. Yeah. It's and you know how it is. It's every Q1. It's like it's a slow. It's a slow part of the year. So, um, I, I'm always pushing back. I'm like, you should be doing sales and focusing on selling and focusing on going outbound and being proactive the whole year, not just in Q1 when you're slow to to combat some of this this yeah. slowness. Um, a couple things, right? Like, usually shops are so chaotic that they can't, like, put time, effort, emphasis, focus on outbound, right? Yeah. So now's the time. You, you've got less going on. You're pulled in way less directions from a shop owner perspective, but also shop salespeople. Like, take the time, sit down, and put focus into, into selling. And in my experience, that's the only thing that works. You can't, like, step into outbound sales a little bit and just, yeah. like, hope that it works. Mm-hmm. You got to be focused on it. And, like, I liken it to the amount of strategy and time and effort and investment that shops put into their production yeah they're thinking about production nonstop, and they're buying equipment and they're trying to level up and put strategies and process in place to make it better you need to do that same shit with sales it's got to be the same approach and the same process and so now is a great time to do that yeah build a sales process start to think about your messaging scripting language start to think about your customer acquisition and targeting strategy like who, who do you want more business of yeah. Like, not just growth for growth, but profitable growth. Like, what kind of clients do you want to do more business with? Like, all those things. Now is a great time to do that and really think about think about that now. And what do you think about differentiating yourself? I mean, as a business owner, I get just constant random cold emails and stuff. Normally about, like, a random loan or whatever they want to pitch me. <laughs> sure, sure. So, like, how do you feel like you differentiate yourself in sales without just being another cold email being like, hey, I'd love your business. Yeah, love it. I've had a lot of shops start telling me that they're using ChatGPT to build like email templates, and I'm like, let me see them. Like, share yeah. share what you got. And it's usually six paragraphs. It's a super, super long, long email. It's yeah. like, nobody's gonna read that. Right. So my my approach with cold outbound outreach has always been be really pointed and direct, and like show me you know me. Show the client that they know who you are in your business. Yeah. So a good example would be. If you're reaching out to like a tap room manager at a brewery, you know, we're helping other breweries in the Long Beach area with retail merchandise solutions that are really seamless in ordering and they're really high quality. They want people that to be their favorite shirt. They want to market the brewery for them. We want to see if we can help you in the same way we're helping them. Can we set up some time? That's a little bit of a different email than, hey, we're a shop in Long Beach and we sell a decorated apparel provider and we do DTG and screen and embroidery. Right. It's like no one knows what that is and no one cares. But if you tell me that you know my business, you know how you can help, it's just got to be really direct, really pointed. Yeah. And I mean, what do you feel like uh, people should do about, you know, literally getting in the car and driving around? Do you see Ooh. that really performing very well? I mean, that's what like the... You know, an SNS guy, a Sanmar guy, that's what they do all day. They're stopping in your literally shop. Literally showing up. Mm. Uh, do you feel like that's worth the time and effort? Or do you think people kind of want to, like, schedule a meeting? I I love that idea. I love that strategy. I think any outbound outreach should be multifaceted. It should be email, calls, social media connections. And I think that in-person visit is great. Yeah. Um, if, if you've gotten... Most of the email campaigns that I'll structure are usually four or five emails per campaign, and I think two months in a row of continuous campaigns. So eight emails minimum, plus a bunch of calls, plus I connect with them on LinkedIn, plus if I think they're managing their Instagram account, I'll DM them on Instagram. That many touches, plus then I stop in. Kevin, T-shirts, Kevin's T-shirt shop, like they're, they're remembering yeah. that, right? So, I, yeah, I love it. Stop in, be in person, face-to-face, drop off a sample um, with the shop name is okay 
with their logo, the company's logo, even better. Yeah. Like, think about stopping in with something that someone can actually use. Like, my brewery's logo is on a shirt that this guy created and just stopped in and gave to me. That's a that's an impactful visit. Yeah. And with um, the outreach that is, like, digital, are you typically automating that now and it just seems like it's personal? Or are you, like, <laughs> using something yeah. like HubSpot and a CRM and then you're like, okay, now it's my turn to type this person, and you're just, like, calendaring it out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. My, I highly recommend automating that yeah. just because it's an arduous process. Right. And it takes time, and it's like i got to make sure that I'm thinking about every day going out and sending those emails. It's set in a campaign and a cadence. Yeah. doesn't mean it's not personalized. I'm still writing all the emails. I'm still documenting everything. But... I'm not, I'm not, I'm setting it to go out for the whole month and it's going out on a cycle. Yeah. And HubSpot or a CRM, most CRMs have email marketing built in, so you can do that. Or you can buy a MailChimp or a Constant Contact or some sort of email marketing outreach yeah. platform to do that as well. So yeah, it doesn't mean it, it's not personalized, it still should be personalized. Yeah. I know, I know for me, when I was first getting into this sales thing, like internally and also in my head, well, here's like the things I was feeling. I felt, man, this is icky. I'm going to have to go out there and like bug people. That yep. was like the first initial thing. Uh, and then I was like, I'm more of a, a tinker, tinker with things. <laughs> sure. So that's what my comfort area was. Like a lot of shop owners yeah. feel like that. I know that for a yeah. fact because they yeah. love being behind the scene. Yep. But you need to sell, right? How do you, like, help people kind of overcome that? Because a lot of it is just meant, it's just this mental, because, like, now I'm into it. It's like, okay, yeah, like, I could yeah, do this. Yeah. Like, but it took a lot of reps. Yeah. I, 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 I love that, like, shop owners are thinking about that nonstop, right? They're always thinking about, like, I don't want to be that pushy salesperson, mm-hmm. right? So my... My recommendation is always like you gotta you gotta just think about the value that you're providing. I'm not pushing shirts on people. I'm providing them with valuable service. Our clients love us. They love what we provide. They love the level of customer service and the focus they provide. Have that mindset going into outreach and cold calling. You know, I'm not outreaching to annoy people. I'm outreaching because I know I can help them. And I help all these other people in their industry. They should know that we exist and and they should know how we can help them as well. So I think coming in with that mindset of just yeah. like positivity, confidence, I'm, I'm here to help people. Like I, I think that really shifts turning that arduous, monotonous, rejection-filled process of cold calling and makes it a little bit more fun and enjoyable. Yeah, yeah I was listening to Tim Gibson, who we all know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on another podcast that Marshall did. And it was all about sales the whole episode. Cool. But what was cool was one of his first sales uh, that he did that was large, he just decided he wanted to work with Adobe, like the software company. And his first sale with them ever was 20,000 units. And wow. like that idea of like deciding yeah. to pursue a specific person, working your way through gatekeepers. like Love that. A, he did his entire sales approach, and he was okay with like not selling to anyone for eight weeks. Because he was going to pull it off. I love that. And that kind of approach was really interesting to hear. Whereas many of us are like, oh, I hope we hustle up a 100 shirt order. Yeah. He was just like, no, I'm doing nothing but this for two months. And or we'll spray and pray a bunch of different industries and a bunch of different businesses. Yeah. I love that laser focused approach. Yeah. And and because outbound outreach is so difficult, having that consistent, here's what I'm going to do, here's how I'm going to focus on it, I think works a, a bunch. Um, I stole this from somebody, but niches make riches. Yeah. yeah. So, like, find the niche that you're good at and exploit it. Like, let everyone know that we are the decorated apparel provider for X in this geography. Like, we work with you. That's the people we work with. Yeah. And even more of a laser folks approach of one company, that's, I, yeah, oh, that's I crazy. love it. That's crazy. Dive, dive deep. Is yeah. That, as- Oh, go ahead, Kevin. As the salesman of the industry, you are the salesman of the industry. S- salesperson. Or the salesperson of the industry, <laughs> right? What are you doing, like, to help shops out? Because I know you're working on a lot of stuff to help shops. I mean, really, like, think about it. Make money. Like, yeah, what, yeah, what that's is, it. That's yeah, it. What are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm working one-to-one with a bunch of shop owners and really helping them s- sell better, sell more effectively, think about sales strategically, um, yeah, w- working with them to, to really build it out. Okay. So I know you started, you launched something recently. Yeah. Talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, I launched uh, Sales Inc. 
last last July we had the first cohort. Sales Inc. is a membership based community, so uh, helps shop salespeople and shop owners just get together and network and talk about what's working, talk about what isn't working. Yeah. So I lead part of it, and then uh, a lot of it is group led. They'll come with mm-hmm. issues, challenges, concerns. We meet twice a month. There's a Slack channel that we communicate on as well. Oh, nice. And uh, the feedback that I've gotten from the folks are, you know, we have the know-how now. So, like, a lot of the stuff that I'll do in my one-on-one consulting, they'll have in Sales Inc. They'll have a shared folder with all the documentation and everything there. So they now have the know-how. Now they can go out and start to execute on some of these strategies. But now they have this support system of more than just me working with them. It's all these other shop owners that are going through the same thing. Yeah. And, and really trying to grow and put time and effort and focus into sales. So... Yeah, it's been great. So I'm launching the second quarter of Sales Inc. Uh, at the end of the month. So How are people able to be a part of that or sign up? Yeah, so sales.inc. Sales.inc. Uh, there's a membership application.